Hello, today we're going to be learning about how to use button groups. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So the first thing we're going to, going to want to do is to create some buttons. Um, so we're going to go over here to user interface uh, and create just a base control thing. We'll just automatically put a control thing there. So we're going to go ahead and add some buttons. So search for a button. Um, we're just going to go with the default button and chuck that in. Um, so we'll just make that a nice size and we'll just call it um, test one. Go ahead and put that in. Um, all right, cool. And then we want to go ahead and duplicate that. So we can just use control D to duplicate that. Uh, yeah, or you can click on it and duplicate as well. Uh, but we've got a bunch of buttons. Let's go ahead and move those out. Go ahead and do that. We go mess this up a bit. They're in a bit of an odd order, but let's call this button two, button three, button four, and button five. Oh, test, sorry. Uh, so we've got these. So what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and come to here where it says node. Um, no, sorry, not that. Uh, in, in Expector, you'll see a little plus thing here. So we can go ahead and click that. So what this is for is creating a new resource. So we're going to go and search for button group. Uh, and you'll see it's created a, a resource here. Uh, this actually can't really do anything in this. So what you want to go ahead and do is save that and go save as. Um, and we will call this button uh, group. If you had multiple, you might want to name it button group. Um, button group, uh, main menu or whatever it was for. But in this case, we only have one. So I'm just going to call it button group. That's fine. So we've gone ahead and saved that. So what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and select a button. And you can see down here at the bottom of it, it says group. So we can go ahead and click on that and we can click load. And we can go ahead and find that button group. Um, we have a bunch of buttons here. So what you can alternatively do if you want to save some time is you can select all of these so I can just click here and then I can click shift and click the bottom one and it'll select all of these buttons and now we are in a mode where we'll, it, whatever we're doing here it will apply to all of them so if I go group and load and then uh, button group it's actually going to load that on to every single one just save us a little bit of work which is awesome um, also if we go ahead and do that again these buttons need to be in toggle mode because of how it works. It's basically creating them into radio buttons and it doesn't work if they're not in toggle mode. So if we go ahead and go click on that um, and then we go ahead and save and we'll just call this uh, button group test. It doesn't really matter. That's just the name of the scene. And then we go ahead and click play. Select that as the scene it's going to play. You can see here. Now the button groups are working. So you can select the different one and it will um, show you the, yeah, it, it select, you know, you can select them. Uh, right now, this isn't super useful. You can't really do anything with it. It's cool. It looks visually cool, but you can't do anything with it. So the way we can access information and stuff about this, um, you can do it individually on the button, but um, in this case, I'm going to do it on, this control node here so uh, it just makes it a bit easier so we're going to go ahead and create a script and we'll go uh, new script and we'll go ahead and call this button group test.gd that's fine we'll go ahead and create that um, so now that we've got that what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to um, within this we want to be able to access the button group so we're going to go ahead and do export and we're going to say button, uh, type in here, button group. There it is. Put that in. Uh, so this is the type it's going to export out. Oh, just kind of a hint for, for Godot. Um, we're going to call this var and then group. So we have a variable that's exported out that is the group button. So now if we go ahead and look at our controller, you can see here now we have a export variable and script variables. So we can go ahead and click on that. And we can go load and you'll find button group here. So we can load that as well. So now this is loaded into our script. At the moment, it's not actually doing anything. It's just sitting there. So it is loaded in now. Okay. 
So what we want to go ahead and do is if we go and we uh, let's do something ready to show you. If we go ahead and uh, go print, and then we go ahead and say group dot uh, get buttons. Uh, which is a function of the the button group. What you'll see is once we play this, it is actually printed out all the buttons here, uh, which isn't super useful, but it's just to show that it is actually getting it. Um, it works in a weird way where um, Godot references that, uh, that particular resource, so all the buttons that are in that group. Um, yeah, they all reference that resource. So you can, whenever you're referencing that, you can just get the information. So you can see we're not actually, um, we're just getting the button group in the control in the group thing here. It's not really connected to uh, these buttons other than the the button group, which is actually kind of useful because it just allows you to get uh, easy access to the, the resource, basically. So what buttons are selected. Uh, so this isn't super useful. So let's, um make it so that the game can actually test um if the buttons have been pressed and then actually do something useful with that so uh the way we can do that is actually on ready we still want to use this but we're going to go for i uh oh sorry for i in uh the group so this is group of buttons we're going to actually use this code down here that we just wrote Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all the buttons that we have. All right, so what we're going to do is go i dot connect, and we uh, want to know whenever it's pressed. So what we're actually doing here is we're setting up a signal. So if you go over to your buttons, you'll actually see that uh, on the node tab here, you've got the different signals. So uh, if you don't know about signals in Godot, um, they're basically a way of different um, nodes talking to each other so uh in this case like when it's pressed it will send out a signal and uh whatever's listening to that can can use that to to run a function or something uh uh so yeah so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use this pressed one here actually so the way we do that is uh uh we want to go ahead and type that the name of it in here so in this case it was pressed and we are what are we connecting to so in this case what we're doing here is we're connecting the uh the button to the control node so whenever this this button um is pressed it sends a signal to the control node so this script is in the control node so we're sending it to self um so the controller is a uh, yeah is actually um controlling it has been sorry the controller has been sent the signal by the buttons um so we can go ahead and we want to run a function so the name of the function um we can just call this button uh pressed let's call it that uh so we've got that now so what we want to go ahead and do is we also actually want to go ahead and go and create that function so button pressed so what's going to happen here um, is in this case, I'm just going to go print and we're just going to print out the current button that is pressed. So if we go ahead and go group uh, dot get dot get, sorry, uh, pressed um, button, the function, uh, that will get the currently pressed one. So you can do whatever you like with that. Um, uh, it just gives you the object of the button that's pressed and then you can you know check it against uh, whatever you want or or call a function on that button or whatever it, uh, it just gets you the object and then you can do something with that later on depending on what you want to do um so we can go ahead and play this now and you'll see whenever we click a button it will um it will it will send that function to the main kind of control node that controls all of the buttons um but that's done through signals and the inbuilt functions on the button so it's only called when you click this uh, and the reason i did it this way is it just makes it a bit nicer you don't have to do weird stuff the the control 
know that all the buttons are within just kind of deals with it so every time you click one of these that button is sending it to the control node yeah so you can see here it's working You've, you basically got radio buttons here this is the point of a group um, button group basically but there you go you can get the button that's pressed and you can run something with it or in another case if you had a different button like an OK button down here and you're like OK I'm done I've done my selection then you could get the button at that time so it's very flexible with what you can do in this case I wanted an update when I clicked it so let's say this was a level select you might want like the little icon to change or something um, depending on what level you've got uh, and this allows you to kind of run whatever code you like when the button is changed. So yeah, there we go. Um, that's how you use the button group and also are able to use information from that to call functions to get information. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you.